I got two words for you guys. Four aces. That is the defensive scheme the New York Giants have used so far this season. I got to see it in action because I watched the Giants and 49ers go at it. And it is something else. It generates one hell of a pass rush. For those of you who don't know what four aces is, it's a term, I believe, coined by footballoutsiders.com. Pretty cool website, by the way. When the Giants defense faces an offense that's going into a passing mode, that is, it's second and long, third and long, they line up in the shotgun, they have four wide receivers or whatever, they use a defensive set called four aces where they put four defensive ends on the field. No defensive tackles, they just put four ends up on the line. Strahan, Yuminora, Kiwanuka, and Tuck. And this creates a absolutely sick pass rush. And you can only double one or two, or if you're lucky, at best three of those guys realistically. And somebody's going to get free. It seems <clears throat> like a given that every time the opposing team drops back against four aces, somebody's going to be in the backfield. You know, Yuminora's having a pretty great season so far. Strahan's having a nice comeback from last year. Tuck and Kiwanuka not getting a lot of credit, but they're playing well. And four aces has generated a nasty pass rush that's making Aaron Ross and Sam Madison just look really good so far this year. Antonio Pierce and Kawika Mitchell. That defense has really come together. That team has really come together. And maybe they're ready to compete for the best team in the NFC now. I'm not sure because they did this to us last year as well and fell off down the stretch. But I like what I see from this team. Offensively, I'm not overly impressed, but... Brandon Jacobs is the real deal. You know, we can make all the jokes we want about how he's fat because uh, he is a big guy, but he's been playing real well this season, and uh, got to give him credit for that. Um, Eli just had a pretty pedestrian day, it, you know, good enough to win. Um, but right now in New York, it's all about the defense. What else can you say? Also... Um, Amani Toomer is setting some mi giant milestones right now, so let's hear it for him. You know, I love the milestones. i got to mention that. Uh, Bill's Ravens. Um, I, I don't know. I, I really like this Ravens team in the offseason, and I, I, I don't quite know what to say right now. It's a lot of things. McGahee hasn't been as good as advertised, I think. He had a pretty good game, but overall, I don't think he's been the superstar. They hoped. The line isn't playing up to... The line isn't playing up to potential. Mark Clayton hasn't played well. Defense hasn't been itself at times. Um, you know, it's a lot of things. And, you know, at least the Ravens did manage to get a Super Bowl out of the last decade, out of this, you know, basic, this era. So you can't take that away from a team. But um, I'm not here to talk about that. Um, I guess Ray Lewis called out Brian Billick and Adelius Thomas, I guess, before or after the game. I can't remember, but... Um, as TMQ noted, there was a point in the game uh, pretty early. It was 4th and 3 for the Ravens. They had the ball at the 38 of the Bills, and they punted. Uh, they punted it into the end zone, so they gained 18 yards on that play. I would have gone for it because later in the game, they had to go for it on 4th and 10 and 4th and 11. They went for it on 4th down quite a few times, and it didn't work then because they were going for it in fourth and long, and maybe if you go for that fourth and short, which was really probably worth going for, maybe you can change things. I don't know. But, uh, you know, Buffalo, surprisingly enough, putting together a solid season. Trent Edwards, um, you know, not playing overly great football, but he's getting the ball to Lee Evans for once, and um, just playing good enough to win these games, I guess. I don't know. Um, let's see, you got the... Patriots beating the Dolphins. A lot is made of this game, of course. You know, more running up the st score stuff, more uh, New England domination, more Tom Brady domination. You know, the usual suspects when it comes to New England games so far this year. Uh, I want to bring attention to something that not a lot of people have noticed about this game. Rodney Harrison sacked Cleo Lemon at some point in the game. I think it was pretty late. <coughs> and in doing so became the first player in NFL history to officially hit the 30-30 club. And what that is, is 30 career sacks and 30 career interceptions. He's a safety, not a linebacker, making it even harder for him to collect sacks. 
He has 30 of each on his career. I think he has more than 30 interceptions, but who's counting? Um, no player in NFL history has managed to do this. He's also been a tackle machine for much of his career. He's been the heart of of, de of defenses in two different team on two different teams, and he has two Super Bowl rings. I say it's time for the Hall of Fame to put their bias against defensive backs aside, put their bias against dirty jerk off players aside, and um, put this guy into the Hall of Fame because he's been special. He's a hell of a player, and I want to see him in the Hall. Um, other than that. Uh, I kind of found it interesting in the second half. Patriot starters were still playing. I was like, well, what's this? Why are they doing this? And then they pull him. And then Matt Cassell goes out there and plays so bad, they actually have to put the starters back in. <laughs> you know, that's kind of funny, but it's also kind of ominous because all it takes is one play for Tom Brady to go down. And if that happens, they don't have a Brad Johnson or a Kurt Warner or a Trent Dilfer to come in and manage the games. They don't. Um... If their backup is really that bad, this season could go south real quickly. I mean, you need a decent backup in this league, and I'm not sure New England has that. Um, Redskins Cardinals. Uh, you know, it's like Withy said. These Redskins games, they're making them Redskins fans chew off their fingernails. They always seem to come down to the wire. And, you know, if you're winning games, it's cool, but sometimes it bites you. Sometimes it don't. But as for this game, um, you know, the Redskins offense, I got to watch it at the end of this game, and I watched highlights of the rest of it, and this Redskins offense is really awful. You know, it's got talent, but these receivers so far have combined for a grand total of zero touchdown catches this year. It's all Portis, Sellers, and Cooley. Campbell has not stepped his game up. I haven't been impressed with Campbell at all this season. Santana Moss is not playing well. Randall L. is stepping up in his place, but that can only go so far. Brandon Lloyd has not bounced back from his awful season last year. The line is incre incredibly injured, even though it's still playing pretty well. Um, you know, it's just not the offense I thought it would be. Luckily, the defense is pretty good. Um, and as for the Cardinals, uh, trying that um, trick play where they have the receiver throw a pass... I don't get that. You're you're at the goal line. You should use those trick plays when you need a big play. You need two yards. Uh, I don't know why you would try and do that. And, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty, but it's not a good play call. And I know that Kurt Warner is playing with torn ligaments in his arm, and I know Tim Rattay isn't very good, but before I would run a trick play, I would... Um, I would hand it off. I, even against that good defense, I would try and hand it off before I would run a trick play like that. I don't know. Um, and the throw was awful. I mean, Anquan Bolden used to play quarterback, so that throw was just awful, and that's really all there is to it. But, uh, you know, it was a close game, nail-biter. Cardinals came this close to winning. Rackers has a hell of a leg. I gotta say, Rackers. He can boot it. Just needs a little more accuracy. Not very clutch either, is he? Uh, uh, Saints Falcons I didn't watch this game Can't say I was terribly interested I will say that Reggie Bush is playing surprisingly well Given that there's no more Deuce McAllister I give him my props He's been doing a great job As the full time back now almost And the Saints have been playing much better since they lost Deuce And I don't know if those two things are unrelated But they probably are unrelated But it's just kind of ironic that things would happen like that um, Breeze is getting a little bit back to form the defense is finally generating pressure, which is the only way they can cover up that bad secondary. They need pressure, and they're starting to get it. So uh, we'll see if the Saints can turn it around. That division is so awful, you just never know. As for the Falcons, the good news is they haven't been drafting wide receiver busts these last couple of years. Michael Jenkins and Roddy White are playing some solid football, especially Roddy White. Um, so the future is starting to look a little more bright for the Falcons fans. Um... Maybe Brian Brom will have someone to throw to, after all. Um, and looks like Leftwich is going to be done for quite a while, so we'll get one last look at Harrington before the Falcons decide if they want to draft a quarterback next year or not. So we'll be in, I'll be interested in that. I think Leftwich is just done. He just can't stay healthy. 